Hi everybody, welcome to season three, episode 28 of the Hard Truth Inside the Football Industry podcast with me, Philip Heitzen and Darren McAnthony, chairman and co-owner of Peterborough United. And I think we're both on a little bit of a high, aren't we? Uh, after, uh, we're, we're recording this on Tuesday after the Easter games. Yeah, yeah, the old, the old win doubles, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We said like we'd like to have like 30 of them a season, you know, for the yeah. Bantams and for the Posh. So yeah, no, it was... Uh, it was a great Easter, so let, let's let, let's spin it. Let's let's start with Bradford. Talk to us about your Easter for the weekend. Yeah, so we um, we drew down at Crawley on Friday. Okay, frustrating. Frustrating. One of those where we could be playing now, we probably still wouldn't have scored. Gotcha. Um, they just were not really at the races. Um, you should be going to places like Crawley and winning. You know, I think if you got uh, ambitions of automatic promotion, but it just wasn't going to happen. So I guess I'm happy that we didn't lose. Uh, and a point is a point, but it's been, it was quite frustrating up to them because we've had, we're unbeaten actually, as of now we're unbeaten in 10, but a lot of those are draws. So, you know, you could look back and say either we timed our run to perfection or a few too many draws that were the difference yeah. between automatics you, and playoffs. You're very resilient up to beat. That's mm-hmm. not a bad habit to have. You know what I mean? So, so, you know, it look. We always say, like, when you get to an end of a season, whether it's promotion or not, you look back in certain games and go, was that a really good point? You know, was that a really, you know, good result? You know, all those kind of things you you, you kind of look back on. You just don't know until you get there. So, you know, I think what was important, did did you play the same 11 then on Monday? Was it it a different 11? Uh, We made a couple of changes um, on Monday. And so yesterday, probably one of the best, if not the best home performance of the season. So, you know, it turned around from getting the point and not playing very well to we should have had them out of sight, you know, chances galore, hitting the post, hitting the bar, ones that would probably, you know, Andy Cook would easily have scored earlier in the season. And maybe he just looked a little bit like he was getting out of confidence, uh, right. which was a worry, but then he did score late on. So, you know, hopefully that kind of uh, helps him a little bit because he's very much a confidence player, but yeah. uh, you know, and all the results you say, whether points are a good point or not a good point. Well, all the results around us, for the most part, went our way as well. Yeah, you're you're, so, you're banging the mix with like five yeah. games to go. I mean, we're all getting a little bit too giddy. It's funny. My my mum was texting me this morning saying, "I think we're all getting a little bit carried away now." But um, you're allowed to. You know, we are we're two points. <laughs> uh, two points. Um, is it from? Uh, yeah, two points on third with a game in hand. Listen, you, you say like you know are you allowed to get giddy you, you know i'll always go back to well when you weren't doing well and people are like having pops and a lot of criticism so it it, it can't go it has to be both ways you know if you're going to dig in when a team's not doing well you have to be able to get overexcited when a team's doing really well so and, and you know the size of the fan base of bradford i mean that was i'd imagine that was really important to win yesterday it was a big home crowd i'd say you know yeah um, we, we had 17 and a half thousand but there were only 100 from sutton yeah, I, I mean, we had a similar thing with God bless Exeter having to travel that far. So usually you'd have said, yes, there would have been a 10, 11,000 crowd for us. I think they only took three, 400. So it's a hell of a distance to travel. Fair play to the ones who did. So same for Sutton, I'd imagine, going to Bradford. So, um, but that, that's, that, that's a big crowd for a bank holiday. So I guess to get the win after the frustration on Friday, look, you're there. You, you, you put yourself, you know, I'd said to you in the summer, you know, you're going to be, you know, a couple of points off automatic, game in hand, five games to go. I presume, what is it, three at home, two away, is it? Or is it? Uh, we've right? got, uh, let's see, five, sorry, far away and two at home. Okay, so you've got six games, right? So, yeah, yeah four away. Okay, you've been pretty good away from home as well most of the yeah, season. Yeah, so. you've been as strong away from home as we have at home. So, so you'd have taken that, you'd have bit my arm off mm-hmm. that. And, you, you know, the chase is on. And, uh, Whereas it yeah. takes you. And we got Rochdale away on Saturday, who are bottom. Um, but you never know what I mean, they beat us at home. I, I keep talking about coupon busters, don't I? And mm-hmm. and you, you know, you only have to look at League One yesterday, you know, when you see, you know, uh, you know Lincoln winning at Plymouth, yeah. Cheltenham frustrating Ipswich, um, Derby getting frustrated by MK Dons. Um, who else in there? So many teams in the bottom seven or eight. Cambridge got a late point as well, I seem to remember. Exactly. So so it, it's just like, you know, everyone is always like, well, they've got the easiest run in and they're playing all the top bottom teams. Now, I don't think you can draw it up like that. I, I just yeah. I just don't. I, I just think everything goes out the window, doesn't it, this time of the season? And as, you know, Sir Alex has yeah. always said, that's squeaky arse time. It's just arseholes are fucking, you know, 
collapsing all over the place. And, and that's just, it, you know, you're playing Rochdale. You may as well be playing Leighton Orient. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> but ironically, that's our last game of the season. So, Which ho- hopefully they're on the beach by the time you play them and they've won the title. And at this point, that's why I'm also hoping that Northampton are the same. So we've got uh, the we got crew sandwiched in between the game that was rescheduled for call ups, but um, the second to last Saturday is Northampton away, and the last Saturday is late in or- well Easter Monday, not Easter Monday. It's Bank Holiday Monday, isn't it? So in theory, in your last two games could be against people that have been basically on the on the booze from celebrating. Hopefully. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. If I was a bookie now, looking at that. You know, wow. So, yeah, you, you've really got a wonderful opportunity, to be fair. Yeah. And Swindon, so next two games, Rochdale away on Saturday, Swindon away on Tuesday. And at the moment, Swindon don't seem like they can buy a point, which, again, we'll see what happens don't when we show it. up. Don't say yeah, it. Because <laughs> you just are, out there. <laughs> we've been, you know, those are usually the ones we struggle with. Like, I was expecting Leanne Gall, who's now at Sutton, to come and, you know, bang a hat-trick against us and as get stuffed. And, I mean, he um, he missed a penalty. Um, hit the crossbar with a penalty and I think that we wound him up like they knew how to wind him up um, which really affected him he was probably lucky to not get sent off with all the niggles and things Um, so we managed to uh, skirt that one but you're just always looking at those as being as being the team that they turn it around against. I'm sure every every supporter around the country probably feels the same. Yeah. Not just us. Uh, I, I guess the other side to it all is it's great to be involved. With, mm-hmm. with, you know, if you, because there'll be a lot of clubs out there who don't have anything going on. You know, I've, I've been down that route before yeah. years ago, you know, where you're, the last four or five games, you kind of like, oh, for fuck's sake, just get it over with, you know? Yeah. So, so, you know, I guess for both sets of our fans, you know, Bradford, Posh fans, it's just to, to have skin in the game. Is mm-hmm. is exciting. It, it's, it makes a nice difference from the last few seasons for us. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred. You know, and it feels like if because there are the players are people that we feel as supporters we can get behind. You know, that makes just we've talked about that before. It just makes such a big difference. Oh to yeah, kind of the connection between the club and the the team. No, ma- massively, massively. I mean, and, and we speak about that all the time. You know, like it all went a bit hairy for us after Cheltenham. And, and mm-hmm. you know, you're at that crossroads of you're losing fan, you're losing the fans. There's, you know, there's, there's people we were talking about a podcast having a go. It was just, it was people who just completely lost their patience. And as it turns out, it might've been the best thing that ever happened to us at that stage. Because since then, it's obviously, you know, six games, five wins, a draw, you know, a lot of goals. You know, if you said after that, I guess nobody would have called that. You know, no, but, I mean, people were saying the season was over, weren't they? Yeah, the yeah. So, so you know, that that's credit to the fans who did stay with the team. That's credit to the players. That's credit to the staff. You know, that's credit to the manager. That's you know everyone there. You know, just digging in and you know one game at a time and just finding that form. And you know that that's what sometimes happens in football. Results like that can just suddenly just create the opposite from what everyone's thinking it's doing. And you know, there was like a moment on. If we go from Bradford to Peter, where we talk about the weekend. Yesterday there was a the Shrewsbury game on Friday was almost too easy. I was I, I was kind of like, oh, you know, I'm watching this game and I've never, you know, Shrewsbury are like usually such, you know, good side, you know, tough place to go. I think they'd won five in a row at home. You know, yes, they just got thumped away, but you know, it's it's cultural. You expect a response. Yes, they had injuries, they they've had cards and people missing, but we've seen that before where you play a team of, yeah, you know, there's a bunch of kids, everyone's injured and you end up fucking losing. So um, to go there and, and and play as well as we did and win comfortably, you're thinking, okay, fine. Yesterday, first half, again, same again, 2-0, should have been 4 or 5, and you're thinking, Jesus, this is like, we're either just playing really well or the other team, you know, and then you're like, we're playing really well. And then the second half, the best thing that probably could have happened, like Cheltenham was, Exeter scored a, a freak goal from the mistake, and the weather was just terrible, and we were terrible for 20 minutes. And then we dug in. And then we scored at a vital time. And maybe that was like a little reminder to everybody. It's not as easy as you always think. The minute you just like let up, somebody's ready to like sucker punch you in the mouth. So, you, you know, good things. You, you have to take positives from negatives. And that would be the positive I'd take from that. But um, yeah, I, 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 I don't want to get giddy. I don't want to get carried away. You know, I'll let the fans. But the one thing's for sure, the players, the fans, just everyone's together. And that's just great to see. And that's all you can ever ask for in any given season as a club that everyone's kind of on the same side everyone's pulling for each other and you know and, and everyone knows what a difficult task it is and was when the manager came in so 
it's just it's enjoyable it's good football to watch it's you know it's 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 a team you know growing up it's a team you know doing everything that you thought early on that they were going to do you know where that leads to i have no idea i, I couldn't put my finger on it I, I couldn't make predictions you know at the end of the day it's the old one game at a time thing you know and see where you go from there so league one is just incredible this season so uh, i mean you only have to look at the top three teams just changing all the time from first to third it's um it's mad it's a mad league <laughs> yeah so you know we talk a lot about the fact you don't like to table watch no do, do you is there a time is there a point in the season when you do yeah um probably about two o'clock on the final day because i think all the kickoffs are 12 right. so it, it, it's kind of like yeah i mean even when we won promotion and everyone was getting carried away and i was getting text messages and we were playing donny you know I, I hadn't dawned on me until i kept getting messages that we could win promotion that night i hadn't really paid attention um the only the only thing i i, I had a look at tables the other day in the champ and league two you know and, and the bottom of league one because you want to see like the teams that are fighting for their lives and whatever else but you know, because we're we're in such a little vacuum now of what is it? It's Bolton, it's Derby, it's it's Wickham, um, it's who else? Uh, yeah, th there's like as the really, manager kept yeah, saying, it's really you, Bolton, Derby, Wickham, Wickham maybe Portsmouth. Yeah, five teams yeah. kind of thing, and, yeah. and you know, a lot of games to go. Like the manager boringly will keep saying, you, you can only do what you can do and control what you do, because yeah, everyone will say, oh, the results went your way on Monday or whatever. But there's so many times I've watched. I remember recently when we were. 15 points off, whoever. And all you kept seeing was Barnsley every game were 3 0 up after half an hour. And they won like 8 9 in a row. And it's like you get tortured just seeing. I, I hate when they have uh, later scores come up during the eye, the eye follow or whatever else. It irritates me because you're like, you know, well, Derby are winning, but you're not winning. And Bolton are winning, and you're not it winning. It selectively brings them up. It, it yeah. doesn't bring them up for all the games. No, it fucking irritates me. So it's almost like you want to go on, you know, you want to go on, on, on mute. You know, and, you, and you're listening to it, and then the commentators are winding you up. You know what I mean? Which BBC commentators have done a few times, you know, as regards to the things they'll say or whatever. And it's just like, shut the fuck up. You're tempting fate. You're, you're saying things that you're looking for a negative here. You're looking for a negative here. Look, everyone's got jobs to do, so they're going to just make it dramatic. But um, I'll just go back to, I just enjoy watching it. You know, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to watch. And that's just, give me that any day of the week over promotions, relegations, you know, controversies on and off the pitch. I just want to enjoy, you know, what your part of putting together come to fruition and look really good and hear your fans enjoy themselves, you know, and, and that's, that's massive, you know? So, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm just thankful that's all happened. It's pretty, I'm looking at the table now. It's pretty crazy. So you've only drawn four games all season. <laughs> no which I've not really noticed until now. So yeah, yeah 22 wins, only four draws, 15 yeah. defeats. So yeah. yeah. It's been a roller coaster. I guess you go into every game knowing there's going to be a result. Yeah, and, and I'd say a lot of those defeats were in 2022. You know, that's the frustrating thing. So, um, yeah, we're not really... I mean, we've had a couple, I think, nil-nil at home under the gaffer, so there have been draws. And I think there's been a lot of clean sheets. That's been a big difference as well. I'm not a big clean... Listen, give me a 5-2 any day of the week, you know, over a 1-0. A um, you, you know, they're the ones you enjoy. Um, but, yeah, we, we don't draw a lot of games. You know, we, 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 we very much win. You know, or dare I say, we, we lose. Um, and it's just been our thing. Definitely in 2022, I'd say 2023, we're, we're a different animal. So, you know, long may not continue. Again, I don't know where it takes us. Um, you, you, you know, of course, you set out with aspirations and those get thrown back in your face when you, you do a Cheltenham. Um, and there's some people saying, well, Darrow, Darrow's right now and he must be sitting there going, no, I, I, I'm not throwing anything in anyone's face. I'm not, oh, look at us and we're brilliant. What a great decision. The man, no. You know, I, I don't make decisions based on what fans think or what fans say or whatever else. I, I make decisions based on 17 years in the game and what I think is best for the football club. That's all I ever do. Rightly or wrongly, that's just what I do. I try and draw on experience. I try and draw on, on, on my own intelligence, looking at everything in, a vac in, 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 in one little area and go, right, is that right for the football club? I've got to make the call because it isn't really a democracy where... 10,000 people make the call. It falls on you to have to do it. So you make calls, whether they're good or bad. Let's see where they take you. But all I'll say is, is that the place is a different place. I, I just watched our 21s win today again, you know, with, with a lot of the squad and a lot of young players in there. It, the place is a good place, you know, and that's when you speak to your employees and you speak to people behind the scenes, it's just like, look, it's great coming to work. Everyone's loving it. Everyone's working towards the same goal. That's all I ever want to hear. 
you know, and, and, and that's that you know yourself, that's fundamentally so important. The messages from fans, you know, and look, you know, they come back, you, you don't complete your job, they're, they're coming at you no matter what. But there's always going to be them naysayers. I can't, like I've always said, I can't lose sleep over a, a minority or percentage of people who don't like you or, 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 or suspect you of something else. I can only do what I can do, except to say, and I've always said this is my the best interest at heart is for the football club. That's it, you know, it's always been that you, you know, that. Yeah, it's just it's always harder when there's not that's that's kind of what you were missing for a lot of the season is that good vibe around the club because it's easier to drown out the naysayers when you know that things are going in the right direction, you have confidence Absolutely. in that everyone's feeling in a good place and that when when you have things like that, then people will overcome adversity. Absolutely. And when you don't have that, then it's really hard to overcome adversity because it's just one more thing that's getting thrown on and it's like it comes into a vicious circle that it is. does it does and i think i think all fans ever want to see is, is they want to see an identity they want to see a certain type of dare i say product in that sounds like a shit word in football to say but it's the truth they just want to know that seven eight times out of ten when they go and watch their team you know they're either going to win or deserve to win um and and, and they know we're going to control this game we might lose this game but we're going to control it we're going to play this way our wide players are going to be exciting you know, we're going to give it everything. We're, we're going to dig in. You know, when when it's the opposite, when it's scrappy, when it's scratchy, when it's not good to look at, when it's like, Jesus Christ, you know, you can't buy an away win to save your life because the way you are. That's what causes issues. That's what causes everyone to come out and go, oh, this team is crap. Oh, the recruitment's crap. Oh, the, everything's crap. It's not always the way you think. You know, we've we've seen that a million times, you know, where you can go into – this bunch of players aren't good enough. And then something else happens and someone comes in and then they are good enough. Do you know what I mean? So it's not about trusting the process and say, you know, my kids try that at me all the time. Trust the process, <laughs> dad. Um, you know, taking a piss out of me like someone on social media. But when you think about it, there is a process to everything. And and you look at play, you look at certain players, you look at how they suddenly become better players and over a season they grow into a player. You look at the impact of an Ollie and Orburn who's been sorely missed, obviously, for a year. Quite Not quite what I thought we would miss that much, but, you know, just his presence, his energy, you know, dare I say, if, if him and Taylor, you know, started the season together with Hector backing them up, do you know what I mean? And then learning and becoming the player he's going to become. It, it, again, I, I, I'm not talking about different managers, I'm talking about players here. It, it, it might have been a different place altogether. You know, his, he, just what he brings in there, Jesus Christ, I mean, what a, yeah, he, he's been... I've never seen a player come back from an ACL injury and have the impact he's had. Usually they take months to get back up to speed. This guy, like five days after he was cleared to play again, after 12 months out, he's back in the team, you know, and, and, and winning man of the match performance is so fair fucking play. Is that is that time it takes to recover a mental thing or a physical thing? I, I, I think I think players who base the game on pace struggle to return from ACLs quickly. Because, you know, pace is like an Achilles injury, an ACL injury. I think those players, like, take a long time to get back up to speed. They need 10 games, reserve games, games or whatever, sometimes months. Defenders, and I've seen some bad ones on defenders, some of them don't ever recover. Um, you know, I think a, a more experienced player whose game isn't based on pace, you know, is based on battling, is based on tackling, based on giving it to their partner to do all the, you know. But in fairness to Norbert, in the last two games, Jesus, he's created goals as, as, as well. So... It's, it's, it's been interesting, you know what I mean? He's, he's definitely been a good signing for the club. His, his careers, you know, he's had a year robbed of him, you know, because of what happened to him. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to have seen him and Taylor a lot longer together than I have so far, um, without a doubt. So, interesting, but fair play to him because he's really, he's rung the bell, you know, as regards to, and people just don't do that after severe injuries. It takes a bit longer. Well, let's, um, we talked a, bit, a little bit about League One. We talked a little bit about League Two, um, mm. just to kind of, Round things off on League Two. So Stockport are in third. We have Leighton Orient first, Northampton second. Stockport now in third, which we've talked about really all season of them being one that's, you know, they would come good eventually. Yeah, they had a horrendous start, but we always kind of yeah. felt, didn't we? We said early on that don't write them off. They're like a dangerous club. You no, know, I mean, they were, when they played at Valley Parade and wiped, wiped the floor with us, I think they were 19th or 20th. And yeah. they looked anything but a 19th or 20th placed uh, team when they did that. Yeah, good manager, um, big club. Um, that level, um, you know, you have to fancy them, don't you? And Carlisle and Stevenage then, um, you know, Stevenage dropped out right now. Um, mm. They're drawing they a lot of games. Game in hand like we do. They're draw they, they've had a horror run, haven't they? Where they've drawn mm. a lot of games, but they've actually stayed there. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't, if they end up dropping in the playoffs, I wouldn't want to play them. 
Yeah. Um, I, I, I would I would I would put them straight away as my favourites to win the playoffs. Only because I've seen Steve Evans in the playoffs before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's tough to play in a one-off game against him. Is uh, you know a tough proposition. Yeah. So I, I, I watch his Rotherham team two 0 down and dead and buried against Leighton Orient and come back and win. So mm-hmm. you, you, you know you don't want to get them in the playoffs. That's for sure. So it and Salford obviously I think had a very late winner on Monday. And they, yes. Are, are they in very, the top, very late. top seven as well? Are they in there? Yeah, they they're uh, seventh on sixty five, sixty six points. So. Yeah, I think they were losing, uh, losing maybe one nil or two one. They were losing by one anyway, and I think they had a penalty that they missed on ninety plus two, and then they scored on ninety plus five and ninety plus six to Mental. actually win it. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that that would finish me off emotionally watching those four <laughs> minutes of injury time. Talk about <laughs> playing till the final whistle. <laughs> yeah, fair play to them. So look, they they look equipped. Um, I, you know, you tell me who's winning the playoffs if it ends up the way it is. Are Bradford winning those playoffs if Bradford don't um, go up automatically? So I think that if the if the league was to finish the way it is right now, mm-hmm. uh, which would have the playoffs Carlisle against Salford, us against Stevenage, mm. uh, the winner of us against Stevenage would win the playoffs. Okay. Um, I think where we have a, uh, the advantage right now is what we talk about a lot. What you you actually have right now at the posh is momentum, mm. you know, and how momentum and the feel good factor um, can take you, you know, that final leap. But yeah. Um, I would probably see it being the winner of the, those two. Not fair call, to be fair. So that that would be really interesting. Um, and actually, National League, so I want to mention Wrexham against Notts County yesterday. That's, so all, that's was, all that comes up on my Twitter feed. Honest to God, it's like more than the Premier League. It's just constant. So I, I uh, paid for the game to watch it, you know, side-by-side City. Um, did so, you watch it on iFollow? Or, or, or it was on you? the... Uh, I forget the name of the service. It was like National League something or other. Right. Um, the experience was very good. So you pay your nine nine ninety five or whatever it was, um, and then you can just like we, we've talked about this. The EFL should look at doing something like it. You can then go and watch any game you want, you know, during the day. So, so you watch two games, but uh, so I, had, I, I couldn't do that. Well, you know, <laughs> watched is a loose word. Like I was what, focused on City, but I had my laptop next yeah, to me yeah. that had the uh, Rex and Notts County. You, you're out of order. You can't do that as a Bradford fan. I mean, that, that's shocking. That is, Philip. I can't believe you've just told me that. You've got your mighty Bantams here, mm-hmm. and you can put on the Hollywood game next to you. I mean, uh, the, no, 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 no. Only any, because uh, I'm any part of Notts County. I, I want you to come for Phil over this. All right, this is like this is outrageous, <laughs> outrageous behaviour. It's like no way. But yeah, I mean, I, uh, Aaron McLean obviously is one of Mike's players in the pal of mine, mm. so he puts a lot of stuff up on social media, you know, and 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 he's comic covering the game. So I mean, it looked like a hell of a game. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it was. Wow. Um, you know, Notts County went in the lead during halftime for City. Um, so, um, you know, there was a, a cheer that came out of, uh, of here when they scored, cause I was really rooting on Notts County. Um, you know, probably cause you know, past experience with, uh, um, like Sean Harvey and the folks that, you know, that have got a lot of history with city. Um, but it was a good, you know, end to end kind of game. It's a shame how it ended, but I thought the experience of being able to buy, being able to watch was something that the EFL should you know, really look at. No, 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 absolutely. And, and you know, I guess look, everyone's going to be rooting for against Wrexham because, you know, it's not, they're not little, you know, they've got the gates, mm-hmm. they've got the money, you know, their accounts. You know, there was, there was 1.1 million people listening to the radio. Okay. So, so, so everyone's kind of going to go for the little guy, even though the little guy is probably a bigger club. When you think about it, Notts County, I, I, I don't know, that's probably a fair argument. Notts County, Wrexham is the bigger club, but, Going off my history of 17 years, Notts County were always, you know, in the league. So, um, look, fair play to Notts County, giving it a go. You just knew, you know, Wrexham, the story, their owners there, the, the Hollywood stuff, it was going to be an ending. Ben Foster signed and all of a sudden saves a penalty. I mean, fucking hell. I mean, it was just, uh, uh, you know, you're, I wouldn't like to be in a Notts County owner. I can only now hope Notts County go on and win the playoffs because that's the only justice because of the one-up, you know, rule at the moment in there. But, you know... Wrexham are going to win League Two by twenty points next year. Yeah, because I mean, no this doubt. is just the start. No doubt right? in my mind. No doubt yeah. in my mind. By twenty, in fact, get to the bookies, put your bets on, ask for fifteen points minimum, winning the league, League Two. Mm-hmm. What are the odds? Not that I'm allowed to bet, but that is a bet that will definitely come home. They will win League Two by canter. 
absolute yeah. all day long, in my opinion. So yeah. I don't disagree with that. And I think that if not to counter come up, oh, they'll that'd, be pretty close. They'll be, they'll be second well. or third, absolutely. Yeah. So, well, you know, that's no, good for football, good clubs, um, good crowds. You know, that's what it's all about. That's the romance. I heard Ryan Reynolds talking about the relegation and promotion. This is something, you know, I was at the US game a couple of weeks ago speaking to the CEO of the US Federation and, you know, technical directors around the US man's team. It was obviously Anthony Hudson, my pal, is the manager at the moment. Yeah. And I was his guest at the game and, and speaking about when will MLF just like, you know, the pyramid, put the pyramid in place and just watch Too America. Too much self-interest. Yeah, just watch the whole system change in America. Yeah. Like it would become so exciting. You just If they're all now big Wrexham fans and watching the excitement mm-hmm. of the pyramid, can they imagine what it would be like in their own industry? Yeah. You know, as, as a game. But anyway, enough about that. But yeah, exciting. So I'm glad you enjoyed the game. I mean, poor old Ban- you know, Bradford probably never got a look in where you were like all starstruck, you know what I mean? By Deadpool on <laughs> the pitch heard. afterwards. <laughs> People listening to the podcast can't see me rolling my eyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> Turn cut, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, classic. No, fair play, you know what I mean? Let's so, call it research for the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course it was research, yeah. So, well, listen. I mean, again, there's been so many twists and turns, but that would probably be the final nail in the coffin because Wrexham lost in a shock loss the other day yeah. and you thought, right, it's on. Mm-hmm. And that, that was not County's opportunity. So I only hope their manager and their players, you know, don't have a hangover from that of the high to the low and you go into the playoffs on a bit of a low because not County on the day would smash most League Two teams, never mind. Not mm-hmm. yet. So let, let's see what happens. Yeah, and I don't know where I stand on the should there be two up and two down, two automatic. Has to be two up. Because, Has to be two up. But if not to count to get up through the playoffs, then the players have done their job. And if they don't, and a team's got 110 points mm-hmm. and scored 120 goals, come on. Yeah. Sh- you, you, I, I understand what you're saying. Anomaly, isn't it? You know what? There's too many big clubs now. It's the fifth division. It yeah. either should be part of the EFL or they change it with yeah. you know two up or whatever else. But you know, for me, it really is. You know that fourth division in the EFL, um. So, so you know, make it so. So, being part of the EFL is an interesting one because that reduces the stigma of being in, you know, the conference. You know, however you want to rebrand it. Sure. Um, because I think that if it's a a next league in the EFL, there's probably less uh, fear about going into it. Uh, you know. When you look at the size of the clubs and you look at the history of some of them, you know, it is basically the fourth division. Um, I think you'd agree there, you know. So uh, you you either give them the, the, the part of the pyramid and then you have to split more money. So that's probably not going to happen. So I would then, okay, if you're not doing that, definitely allow more playoff places. You know, allow two up and one through the playoffs and do that, you know. I get why teams in League Two would vote against it, particularly the ones who are struggling down the bottom, but it's the right thing to do, you know. So, you know, let's, let's see. Let's see what happens in the future. But I think it's got to be on the, the table for the EFL to have that discussion. Now, going over to the championship, and we're kind of working our way up. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people getting worried about the relegation zone in the championship right now. I see uh, Paul Ince got sacked today. Uh, Mick McCarthy was sacked. People are already talking about Gareth Ainsworth, and he's been there, what, two minutes at QPR? Yeah, well, um, I, I, I don't I, – you're right, two minutes, but he's had, what, 10 games? Is, is he mm-hmm. had his 10 games? I'm not sure, but obviously he hasn't had the impact they've wanted. Um could you could you pick? I think the bottom club is already down. Are they? Yeah, it looks down. like Wigan's down. Most yeah. likely Blackpool's down, and then it's so, one of Rotherham, Huddersfield, QPR, Cardiff, Reading. I, I I don't think Rotherham are gone down. I don't think Huddersfield are gone down. There's Neil Warnock working miracles. So mm. you would have to look at QPR, Reading. Who else is in there? Um, uh, Cardiff. Car- mm, mm. Oh, that's man. That's that's mad. I mean, that is absolutely mad. I mean, so let, let's see what happens. And by the way, massive congratulations to Burnley. Two mm-hmm. things I'm going to say there. Their owner took a lot of stick because of all the loans he took on the club to yeah. buy it, apparently, yeah. and then get relegated. There were all the headlines about how they got yeah, to We talked about that last year, didn't we, about the risk of going down with all those. And, and, and again, sometimes that's where the press lets themselves down, where maybe <sighs> things aren't quite what they seem. But fair play to him. He's got a right manager. He's backed them. He's, he's changed the philosophy of the club. What well, Vincent Company's done, how he's not on everyone's list to be a manager. And I actually think if he stays at Burnley, they'll be top 14 comfortably. Because of the style of play and the way they play and the young players they have, and you've seen how easy uh, Canton have won promotion, uh, every metric they're top of, and very nice style of football. No doubt in my mind, they're comfortably staying as long as he's there. 
So if he's not there, then they will struggle because a new manager, new philosophy. But, you know, wow, 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 wow. And they've only lost two games all season. That's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Isn't it funny? Like, you know, for so long it was, is there life after Sean Dyche? And I think the answer, um, I mean, for the for the wonderful job he did every year in keeping them up, yep. um, it feels like a different club now. I'm not sure Burnley under Sean Dyche win promotion from the championship now. Mm-hmm. That's back up. So, you, you, you know, and, and I think the Sheffield United lose yesterday. The, the goalie said um, Let's have a look. They played Burnley, didn't they? Yes, they did. They lost uh, 2-0 to Burnley. But they've, um, you know, I think the last time we talked, it was a little bit closer. Middlesbrough have fallen off a bit. So yeah. uh, they're five points clear of Luton with a game in hand. Have to say, again, Luton, Millwall. I read a good article in The Athletic on both of those clubs and what they're doing in that level. And Coventry. I watched the Coventry game, you know, because mm-hmm. we were 2-0 up. I turned off at half time, so I had to turn on another game at the time. <laughs> Just to distract me for 45 minutes. So I watched Coventry come back from behind against them. Who are they playing? Uh, West, West, no, uh, Watford. Watford. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, one of my former players, Matty Godden, scored a great goal. But yeah, you, you, you know, I'm, I'm just so envious of some of the things happening at your Lutons, you know, and, and at clubs like that, you know. Uh, more so because they've done it in such a way where, you know, I feel we should have done it. And, and, you know, of course, we all make mistakes and whatever we go up. Like, it kills me when I see fans constantly having to go at my current manager about he can't manage in the championship, can't do this, can't do that. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, you know, I'd like to see loads of managers try and take on the task at a club our size. You know, it, it's not always as easy as you think it is. And I don't think his career should be besmirched by the fact that we've been relegated from the championship yeah. a few times. It's it's just it, different resources. I mean, he can't control yeah, necessarily the resources. Different resources, resources yeah. different, yeah. different things have happened. You know, I, I still think he can manage with his eyes closed in the champ. And, you know, it's, it's not always about the manager. So you can blame me, the club, the lack of finances, the whatever you want to do. But it's tough to just, you know, hold that over a manager like that. It's not fair, um, you know. So what is it about a manager like Neil Warnock? So he had two mm-hmm. good results over the weekend. And then Roy Hodgson at Crystal Palace, where they come in and just make an immediate... Like, what's their secret sauce? What do they know? I, 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 I think they're very different. I, I think Roy Hodgson's different from Neil. Hodgson mm-hmm. just knows Palace, and I think he's just gone in there and gone, look, we've got a really good squad of players. You know, your Elise's, your Eze, some of the players have got fantastic on the eye. And I think he's just simplified it, you know, and, and, and he's probably, like, picked an 11 and gone, look, just go out and play, you know, and, and, and take the pressure off, go score some goals. And I think if you go to Warner, Warner's just a great... He's a great motivator. I don't think he's a, he's this master tactician coach. I think mm-hmm. he's a better motivator, which sometimes is even better than being a master tactician. And I, I watch the way he is and, and, you know, the results he's got. And going away, I think they won at Middlesbrough. They went behind. You know, I'd watched their game the other day and there was the beat. Well, was it Watford? They're just, yeah, that's, that's Neil Warnock. You know, I think he's one of them guys who makes everyone feel good about themselves. Staff, players. You know, what a job he's done. And obviously Huddersfield's getting taken over. So it'll be interesting to see if he stays there or if he takes another break and then he firefights again in January, because I'm sure his bonuses he finally does, it's probably more than a salary for a championship manager just being there all year. You know? right. So, yeah, interesting to see, to be fair. Do you think people like Neil Warnock will actually ever retire? Or whether he just wants to keep coming back for more? Or the, the allure of coming back is too much? I think he's like a Barry Fry, he's addicted to yeah. the game. I think, you know, I don't know if he wants to be a director of football, I don't think it's his thing. I just think he likes being amongst it. I think come, you know, he spends four or five months on his farm. He probably thinks then January, right, the wife wants me out of the house. Oh, somebody's offering me, you know, half a million yeah. to come in, half a million to keep them up. You know what? I'll take that extra million for my next six months sabbatical. So fair play to him. I mean, the guy's just a legend, in, in, you know, one of those legends in the game. And football will be a, a poor replacement. People like Neil Warnock are gone from it. And so if we, when we go into the Premier League, so the, mm. the trap door is looking closer and closer for Southampton. <laughs> Um, yes. at the moment yes. um, and Leicester and so Leicester it's it kind of curious to me in terms mm. of Brendan Rodgers getting sacked because they talked at the start of the season about how this year was going to be different and they didn't have the funds and it's going to be a struggle it seems like it's just a let's roll the dice and see if some uh, someone who's going to come in and with a different perspective and a fresh if, set of eyes if Leicester get relegated it'll be one of the best squads ever to get relegated mm. now I'm not saying they're a top five squad but you and I both know that squad should be nowhere near the bottom eight teams. Yeah. Um, I'm not, they've, they've hired Dean Smith. That'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. I think Shakespeare is former Leicester guy is gone in with them. Um, but they're far too good to go down. But you've heard that said a million times. Yeah. So Southampton, 
I love the recruitment. I love what they tried to do. They just haven't got the right managers in place throughout the season. And that, again, fundamentally is all about having the right man in charge, right? And and having been down that route myself, I can say, yes, It's you, sometimes it just does come down to the right manager. You can blame players, you can blame recruitment, but sometimes it is the guy in the hot seat. Yeah, and there still is six teams, I was just counting up, you know, over, over the four-point spread between that 18th place. I'd worry about Leeds as well. I mean, I watched mm-hmm. them the other day and, and, and you know, I like Leeds and I have a lot of time for how they do things. So that would be a massive disappointment for their fan base if they ended up falling through the trap door. Um, again, I think their squads, you know, bar a goal scorer, you know, bar somebody that can score, you know, 10, 15 goals who's fully fit playing all the games. I mean, they have everything in place. So that would be devastating for the Leeds fan base to suddenly be back in the championship. I couldn't, I couldn't call it. I couldn't tell you who the mm-hmm. final relegated spot is. No. If you're if you're writing Southampton off already, you know, and, and they're down, and you know, Forrester obviously is wobbling as well. You know, they they'd had a good nice little spell, and now they're dragged back into it there. So, going to be really interesting the run in the Premier League is fascinating this year. Yeah, well, there's going to be a couple of those teams that get a surprise couple of wins put together, and then all of a sudden they're out of it, like Palace. I mean, not necessarily surprise wins, but Palace put a couple of wins and they've dragged themselves out of it. And, yeah. Uh, you know, any club has the ability to do that at any time. Yeah, correct. And the other one is um, Everton. Deutsch mm-hmm. has done okay in there, but they had a bad loss against United. So they're still in the melee down there. You know, yeah. and then if you go to the top of the table, Newcastle have been a pleasure to watch. Obviously, as a Liverpool fan, I've kind of like been grinding my teeth watching as Newcastle and United pull away. You know, our season's pretty much finished. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Arsenal and Man City now, that's going to be an exciting run in. But, you know, as much as I love Arsenal, and I predicted they'll win a title. I just, I can't see Man City not winning the last nine games or whatever they've got left. <laughs> just, mm-hmm. you know, like, why? Because I've seen it happen where Liverpool have had a couple of titles stolen from them. Not stolen, but like... They just tripped up know, at the last moment. <laughs> because Man City have been just too good in yeah. the final run in and, and, and fair play to Jack Green and she's showing why he's a £100 million pound man. I think he's been one of the best players through this run. So it'll be interesting to see how Arsenal responds to the second half against Liverpool setback. You know, because they were they were brilliant for thirty five minutes against Liverpool, mm-hmm. and if they, I, I was thinking this is going to be four or five nil. Um, but fair play to Liverpool, obviously in the second half. But you know, we we I've already spoke about our problems, and obviously we're going to have to address them in the summer. Um, but yeah, it's going to be up that end of the table. I mean, Newcastle, everyone was moaning about their lack of goals, but I tell you what, you know, they're, they're dangerous. They're such a good team. You know what I mean? So they really have a lot of momentum there. So I am. Um, as a Liverpool fan, of course, I'd love to see Newcastle get third over United, you know? So uh, we'll see. Has, has Eddie Howe surprised people by taking Newcastle so quickly? No, I, I don't think so. I think he's always been seen as an excellent coach, uh, manager. I think he's always had that in his locker. I think what he did with Bournemouth, taking him from the bottom right. division to the top division and keeping him there for five years tells you what a phenomenal manager he was. I think he took a break at the right time. Mm-hmm. And I think Newcastle was a perfect job for him. And then obviously coinciding with new owners, the, the wealth. But again, they haven't spent 400 million or 500 million. I think they've been very methodical in the transfer windows. I think they have, you know, Dan Ashworth's a brilliant technical director. I just think they're, they're primed to go. And I think, you know, they won't go and spend 200 million next summer. You know, that team just needs, you know, probably three good signings in there, like what they've already done. And they'll be up there. Will they win a title next year? I'm not sure they're ready for that. But they're definitely going to be in the Champions League, hopefully. They, you know, so that's exciting for, for the Magpies. Um, you know, interesting. It's like a change of the guard. So t- talking about Eddie Howe when he took his break. So if you were Graham Potter's agent, what would you be recommending he did right now? Enjoy your money. Just take a breath. Just wait till next. Don't go back in in the summer. You know, just wait maybe until something, a project comes up halfway through the season. We know he's a good manager. We know all the, you know, the, the stuff going on at Chelsea and I've read all the articles which are demeaning to him, some of them, and I thought I was unfair. Um, he's an excellent manager and his time will come again. Now, will he get another top four club? I don't think so. But, you know, just take your time. I, you know, he's not a skint member. I think at the end of the day, you know, take time away from the game. Think about why it didn't work out, what you're going to do differently and get the right project. You know, the, the, the right project will come again. Um, no doubt in my mind. And, and you know, you look at Brighton as well. Brighton, I mean, we're, we haven't spoken about them, but I think they're in with a chance at top four as well. So, um, you know, fascinating, really. I mean, I think they got robbed against Spurs by VAR over the weekend. Um, so, yeah, it's it's the Premier League really is, as it's evolved, it's fascinating. Which is great because, you know, you fear that it's just going to be a runaway every year. 
Yeah, and, and, and you know, Man City end up winning the title again. I guess you're going to say it is a runaway every year that they always end up with the title. But well, you, they're not doing it by twenty points, are they? No, they have a down season, and you know, this, are they going to win up by twenty points with Arsenal now on the up? Liverpool will come back into it. Chelsea are going to be a different beast. No, they won't be winning up by twenty points. You know, but will they be winning titles every year? Yes, and if they win the Champions League, does Pep? You know, look at that and go, what else do I need to achieve? What will be interesting for City will be is the evolution of from him to a new manager. That's when you're like, okay, is there going to be a couple of years for other teams to win the title now? Yeah. And it seems interesting people are talking about Vincent Company now. As, uh, uh, and I, I, and I and think they need to, uh, I, I understand why, but I think, you know what, Pep will be there for another two years. If Vincent Company does his job at Burnley and, and consistently has them finish in top half, he's just a natural, yeah. you know, person. But if Jurgen for some reason left and took the German national team job, you know, or whatever else, not that I want him to leave Liverpool. Mm-hmm. But you, I mean, you, you, jobs that come available. You'd be all in for company, wouldn't you? At Liverpool, the way he's playing and everything else, you know what I mean? So, but but I, I'm I I kind of think Jurgen's relishing the opportunity of making things right in the summer. So I'm, I'm quite excited about what he's going to do in the summer to fix things of what's happened this year. I'm actually I got to the point now where. I, I, a lot of Liverpool fans are frustrated, whatever. I'm actually excited about moving on from a certain amount of players and going into the next stage and seeing what he can rebuild. And, you know, Guardiola's rebuilt a couple of teams at City, but have kept winning. And I think, you know, Jurgen will get the opportunity to rebuild the Liverpool team. And if he gets the right players in, you know, we'll be back rocking and rolling again in, in no time. So, you, you know, and, and I also say, like, there's too many, some of the criticism Trent Alexander Arnold's had. You know, you know, I watched him on Saturday against Arsenal. And yes, he had a tough day against Martinelli. But I think people forget he's playing behind probably one of the least defensive-minded wingers in Salah to help you out, you know, a lot of the time. I think sometimes he can drive you mad where he ends up actually being more of a hindrance in a game like that. Like, never mind all the missed chances and the penalty. You know, Trent's on his own on an island. And I think sometimes the criticism is overblown. Um, I, I, I really want to see him become the comeback player next year in the Premier League because I just think the kid would be world class and um, I'm not one of those who thinks he's finished so you, you're at the acceptance stage of uh, of grief if you will of uh, you know what's happened with the season and yeah I, I, I actually I actually think it's going to be a good thing in the long run I think you know you, you win a quadruple you climb a hill you fall into the bottom of the mountain there's a lot of people who, who can't get up the mountain with you anymore so unfortunately you have to wish them well and send them on their way and you have to now go and get people who are going to help you back up the mountain but I think if Klopp's leading the expedition up the mountain, I've got no problem with that at all. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm very excited about what he can do. And I think it will re-energize him as well, having five, six, seven new players in amongst the squad, you know, to play with and improve and toy. You know, next season, Nunez is going to be a better player. Diaz back from injury. You know, Gapko, Gapko who I criticize at the start, looks like a player. You know, the young kid in, you know, in midfield who got injured, you know, and... There's, there's, and then the signings they make. There's going to be a lot of good things, I think, next year at Liverpool. So just a little bit of patience is going to be needed there. So this morning, the uh, EFL announced the shortlisted um, mm. candidates for the 2023 awards. Oh. So I uh, copied those down and thought we'd run through them and get a uh, some quick fire, uh, you know, runners and riders who... who... That's, that's my dog barking as Ronnie Edwards wasn't in the young player in the <laughs> Fucking outrageous when you when you consider he was like outside of Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City was the only yeah you know, Peterborough's name and that England under twenty wow. squad he was playing in recently. You know what I mean? Just like fucking madness. But yeah, so keep the yeah, ju- some, keep the judges away from your dog. Let's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Come here. So yeah, some some good names so, in there. So we have uh, Championship Manager of the Season, Vincent Company, Mark Robbins, Michael Carrick. Mm-hmm. It's got to be Company. Mm-hmm. Uh, but hats off to Mark Robbins as a. Um, and Carrick um, for the job he's done. Yeah. Oh, the company's got to win that. Yeah. League One, Kieran McKenna, Stephen Schumacher, Darren Moore. Schumacher, because of what he's done with Plymouth, um, McKenna for the football, mm-hmm. um, you know, and the expectation of Ipswich end up winning the title, like I think they might. Um, but because Plymouth last year, the disappointment of what happened late in the season, because it's Plymouth versus Ipswich and Sheffield Wednesday, wow. you have to say Schumacher has been seamless of not improving wow. the right low. And a massive shout out to Ryan Lowe, by the way, for what he's doing with yeah. Preston. And two ex Bradford players in there with Steve Schumacher and Darren Moore. So I had to throw there that There you in. go. You're happy. You're um, happy with that one. So, League Two Paul Simpson, Richie Wellens, and Steve Evans. Wellens, you would say Evans if they'd finished top three. Um, yeah, 
and obviously, you know, the Carlisle manager, yeah, what a job he's done. Mm. But if, if the season was to finish and Evans was in the top three, him all day long. Yeah. If not, Wellens, because of how seamless it's been for Leighton Orient returning to League One. Uh, player of the season. So uh, championship, we've got Josh Brownhill, um, Chuba Akpom, and I'm probably That's mispronouncing the all these, and then Victor Gaikaris, maybe? It's yeah, the commentary striker, but it's got to be Akpom for the goals yeah. he scored. I think he's got 28 goals or whatever, so that's easy. And your man in League One, so it's Aaron Collins of Bristol Rovers, Johnson Clark Harris, and By Bar- Harry Bar- Bannon. By my, like with all due respect for Clark Harris to win it two years ago and the Golden Boot and probably do the same thing again. Mm-hmm. By an absolute mile, he has to win that award. Now, if somebody else ends up winning that, that won't be because of the who is the best player. That'll be down to club size and everything else. I'm sorry, but it has to be Clark Harris. And then in League Two, it's Andy Cook, Sam, Hospin, Sam Hoskins, sorry, and Carl Piagiani, which Cook. um, Cook's having the season of his life. Um, Cook. And actually, I think it's a. Uh, it says something about Steve Evans that he's got Cal uh, Piagiano at that. Who came, who came from our U team? I'm sorry? Came from our U team. Yeah, did he? I didn't know he that. Did. He did. He's, he's one, one of those one players, of again, at Oldham. Like, we talked yeah. about um, the lad that's at Mansfield, uh, mm-hmm. Kilo Dunn. Yep. Um, it's, the, they should have not never been relegated with that team out of uh, League Two. But, again, as we've talked about, through the divisions, you know, good teams doesn't Happens. mean that you're uh, immune from Happens. relegation. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the awards are always, for me, too, too soon. You know, I honestly mm-hmm. think they should be nominated and nominations should be in when the season finishes. You've got a whole month of May. You could do it really quickly. It's all digitalized. And then you have your award a couple of weeks later. So I just think they're too soon. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, for my boy, if he wins the Golden Boot and Player of the Year, that'd yeah. be just desserts. And, and he doesn't get enough credit for the job he does. And not only that, it's his durability, you know, through all those seasons to play the games and still score. Now, if he gets 30 goals again this year, that'd be 75 goals against three seasons, including the season in the championship. Tell me another striker in the EFL who's done that. Yeah. None. Now, so, are there any uh, bonuses typically tied to awards like this? Or is it really just Golden Boot? It's Golden Boot. You know, Jono gets like a five-figure amount for that. Sometimes you'll have, when you're buying a player, you'll put in a clause, 20 grand to a team. If that player gets in the team of the year, you can't have that clauses in there in certain deals if you're trying to dress up a deal to make it look bigger and better. When you're buying a player, you go, wow, there's 25 grand for team of the year. Uh, there's 20 grand if, you know, they win the Golden Boot. All those little things help. So we, we have done those deals. Uh, so a couple of other points. Let's talk about yeah. TV rights because there's a couple of things going on related to sure. TV rights. First of all, uh, any opinion on the EFL giving exclusivity to Sky Sports? No. Okay. Uh, you don't want to get yourself in trouble on that one? <laughs> Just Yeah, no comment for me on that yeah. one at the moment. So let's see how it pans out and let's see the deal. Um, and for the Premier League, they're talking about creating their own streaming service. Shock horror. Mm-hmm. So, you, you, you know, everyone's coming to the realisation that whole plus plus you know, thing. Um, I don't think the Premier League will do that. I think they'll end up with one more TV deal. I think they're probably five, six years away from being in control of their own streaming. Um, but there's no doubt that bigger deals are coming. And I think there's going to be even more money. Look, our game needs it. What we need now is more disparity amongst our leagues. You, 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 you know, so we've always said that League One and League Two have to fight for a bigger share. The champ have to fight for a bigger share. But we need a bigger share. So that, that's the next fight, I guess. So let's see where the TV deals go. Um, I've always said the EFL, good people at the top. So let's see what, what happens. Let's see. Let's be pleasantly surprised and see where it lands. So we have um, a couple of questions. Let's see. Yes. So um, Thomas, who's a Birmingham fan, Darren's been talking about how ex- Dara has been talking about how excited he is about the Posh Academy players coming through. Mm. Are you not worried by the elite player performance plan? and the ability of Premier League clubs to snap up, you know, you're always, cheap. Always, always. I had a technical meeting the other day with Scarfy, who runs the academy, uh, and Baz, and, and going through all contracts, and who aren't, you know, it's such a tough thing, because you're deciding on teenagers' futures, are they getting a pro deal, are they getting this, are they getting that, and you're always worried about, you know, we have one kid that's come through the academy that's like, we have a colour system, and his colour is like off the charts. Everything is just like, go, 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 go. And he's been with us for years and we're, we're doing our, a pro deal with him. So, but you're always, and, and him and his parents are fine, they'll sign. But you're always worried there's those Premier League clubs sniffing around. You know, our 16s went and battered Arsenal 5 2. So then you're worried straight away Arsenal scouts will be going, who's that 15 year old? Who's that kid? And at that stage, they can pretty much nick them for 
hundreds of thousands as opposed to millions. So yes, you are always worried about it. But at the end of the day, we're in a really difficult position as, as an EFL that if the Premier League come and offer us X amount more money and they want those rights over our young players, that's what happens. It's, it's difficult to turn it down because you're living in the now, as much as everyone wants to be an academy. And, you know, the, we were, I was talking yesterday with like Jason and a few people around the club about, you know, Exeter. And I have to give them massive credit because, you know, you see what they've done in League One this year. That's a club run by the fans, good people behind the scenes, full of homegrown talent in the team. You saw a lot of their players yesterday. And they, you know, they have no choice but to play them, but they do that purposely. And, and you know, I'm, I'm so, I have to be complimentary about everything that they do. And I like seeing them do well in League One. I don't like the fact they beat us in their place, but I, I like the fact that they just, that they constantly produce, like Crew have always done, they just produce their own players, their own talents. And you just have to give so much credit, you know, to clubs like, maybe, I don't know, it was a mad idea we could have a different pot of money with all these TV deals been sliced and dice. where at the end of the season, some teams get a bit more money for producing more youth homegrown players. Yeah, as an incentive. Yeah, instead of just teams being able to yeah. go out and spend 20 grand a week of this money yeah. and get themselves in trouble and get themselves into the situations, maybe we should reward the Newports, the Exeters, the Crews, you know, the Colchesters, teams like that who basically say, hey, we're going to make sure seven, eight of our starting 11 every week are from the academy. Mm -hmm. Maybe those clubs should be rewarded, you know what I mean, for doing that. So just as a wild idea, maybe they already are. I might, I might be talking through my ass, but I'm just, I just think it's like if we want the game to go that way, if we want to strengthen yeah. football, you know, on, on the domestic level, you know, you just want academies doing well all the time, right? So, yeah, that's, that's something I, you know how strongly I feel about. Mm, yeah, and, 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 and getting paid for playing uh, academy players from the Premier League as opposed to having to beg for um, them to come down and all the cost, as we've talked about a lot. Associated uh, with we, we're correct, and we've had that argument over and over. Mm -hmm. And that's that's something that I've stood up in the FL meetings is so easy to do because we, we just all have to vote over one transfer window not to take one more player from the Premier League. Mm -hmm. if every club in the 72 just stood up and said, for one summer, we're going to punish you until you come to our agreement that you will pay their wages for them to come and play for us. We're not taking any of your players. Yeah. If that happened, the Premier League would be like, fuck. They would lose like a whole year of, of academy and under-21s and under-23s going out and playing. They wouldn't like it. So that, that's how you get people to the table. Wouldn't it be interesting for Premier League teams to put academy players into a draft system? Yeah, well, you, you're then nicking my ideas. I put that on Twitter years ago. You know, I actually said Skype and TV, TV the thing. It would be unbelievable. I've always said that. You know, the best players would go to the worst teams and play. You know, and, and it would just be so good for football. It would be exciting. I, I wrote a whole thing on Twitter. It was like a 10-page stream. Before we started doing the podcast, that I wrote about it. So some people loved it. Some people were like, eh, never going to happen. You know, the, the big Premier League fans hated it and pooed it and fucking usual, you know. But they're all at a different table from us. They're having a different meal. So anyway, but yeah, so it's all good, you know. Um, and, and look, I think it would be remiss of me. You know, we don't cover what happened last week. People would be like, oh, you as a podcaster avoiding things and da-da-da-da-da. So... You know, everyone knows that obviously the, the stadium company was put into receivership. Um, there's no, it's not that I don't want to talk about it. It's just, there's nothing to talk about at the moment. There's no finger pointing going on. I don't want to get into Twitter battles and public arguments because I don't think that's the way to work things out. Um, everyone knows that there is issues amongst the ownership. That there's no, you know, there's no getting away from that. All the owners know that. All I can say is what I said in my tweet before the news came out, which was obviously a shock to me when it was, when it was done at the time. Um, is look, here's the thing. I, I, my job is to fix all that. So I'll work away and I'll do it without talking about it publicly. I'll do it without going on social media. I'll do it without finger pointing. You know, my job is to make everyone feel good about themselves, to make everyone feel like they come out of it in the right way. Um, you know, I'm not losing sleep over the staging company being in receivership. That's something, you know, I'll try and put right as best I can. I never wanted to buy the bloody stadium. Everyone knows that as well. Um, but I understand the fundamental importance of the club, the stadium and whatever. We have a lease for a long time as well. And that's why I was like, people don't need to panic. Um, all I'm doing now is while everything's gone on on the pitch is I'm planning, I'm negotiating, I'm doing deals, I'm reducing debt, I'm doing long-term deals, I'm, I'm trying to do deals with the people mentioned and all of that as well. You know, talks are ongoing and, you know, I can't say anything more than that. Just like I think one of them had put out a tweet about that, about discussions and whatever. Yeah. All discussions are ongoing and, you know, my only importance as it always has been is the actual football club. I have no other skin in the game bar 
making sure the football club is the thing that comes out of it in the right way, and it will. So, you know, people have to trust me. Is there a timeline for resolution, or is it just as long as it takes? As long as it takes. As long as it takes. And, 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 I, and I want to make sure all sides are happy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so, and again, no finger pointing. I don't want anyone, please, no articles written about what I'm saying on the podcast because what I don't need is I don't need salacious headlines provoking other people again, you know, doing whatever else. It's not what I'm about. You know, again, listen to what I'm saying here. You know, I'll make everything right. Uh, I'll make sure everything's fine. And that is my only job. I said this in the previous tweet all the way up to the summer, as well as going on college trips with my son or another one tomorrow. Um, I'm coming to the UK for a good four or five week period to go into, you know, uh, next season, budgets, CEO, manager, all this stuff as well. But I'm already having these discussions. So, you know, common ground is it will be found. Uh, common sense will prevail. Um, and the football club will be fine. And, um, you know, hopefully as well, you know, it's something that will be done over the stadium. But again, I don't want to go into that now. But, but, but again, it's not as bad as everyone thinks it is. And, you know, people speculating about all this stuff online and people losing their shit and people saying this and coming up with this agenda. Just be careful with the words you choose because so many of you are wrong that are saying things and, and it's just don't believe everything you read. Don't believe every rumor. Um, you know, I've been dealing with this since last summer, um, you, you know, and, and I'm putting it to bed by this summer because I'm not having another season with it like this. I can't. It's, it's just it's drained the energy of me for like 10 months, 12 months. And, uh, you know, um, my whole goal now is to make sure by next season we're in the best position possible on and off the field and everyone's singing from the same hymn sheet, rowing in the same boat and, you know, are, are you know, coming away from it all basically happy that everything's resolved. So that's, that's all I'll say in the matter. I'm not trying to avoid it. I'm not trying to, to shirk my responsibilities. Just some things just can't be spoken about. So that's the only thing I'm going to say about it. So again, I'd rather know headlines and no big articles written about what I've said in the podcast. You're not negotiating over Twitter? No. Oh, never have been. Never will do. So, you know, maybe in transfer deals, you know, where I play the game. <laughs> but stuff like this, I've yeah. never done that. And, and if you if you watch my Twitter stream for the last X amount of months, never done it. Yeah. Never, no matter what anger's going on or whatever else, it's, it's not a place I'm going to do it. You know, and, and, and by the way, that's not a pop at anyone else. Everyone can do their own thing. You know, everyone's a, a grown adult and mm-hmm. will have their own way of handling things. You know, I just choose that I'm going to handle this as best I can now on behalf of the football club because, again, that's my only agenda is the club. I have no other skin in the game, you know, bar making sure the club is good. And, and that's my ultimate goal. And that's all I'm going to do. So that's it. All right. Well, with that said, I know that you've got to go to a, a glamorous American college town. Yes, uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm flying. So, yeah, I'm off to Wisconsin for two days. So another college visit with my son. Then we do SCAD, and then I'm in the UK for like, you know, four or five weeks going through a lot of stuff. So, again, for people out there who are frustrated with podcasts not every week, you're busy, yep. I'm busy. It's not always about, oh, we've won, so we'll do one, or we've lost, we won't do one. Oh, it's we so we won't do one. Something. It's not. We weren't even going to do one today because of my trip to the college thing. It was only because you were like, let's, let's just squeeze one in before you go to the airport. So, yeah, we're, we're trying, you know, as best we can. And so, yeah, good luck to the Bantams in the run-in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll hook up again soon. Another uh, couple of wins in the next two, and I'll be joining you in the UK for uh, the last week of the season. I think. Oh, listen to that. Book your flights, son. Eh? Oh, something <laughs> closing. Get on there and book your flights. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, have a good trip this week. Thanks, Thanks everybody, much. as always, for listening. Uh, Thanks, guys. Keep the questions and comments coming, hardtruthfootball.com slash contact or any of the social media uh, handles that we have. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks, everyone.